dire conditions of South Africa's ailing public health system coming into sharp focus again. Earlier this year, Tandisa Hospital in the East Rand grabbed the headlines after a 30-year-old uh, police officer shot his 30-year-old partner and uh, nurse multiple times at the facility's parking lot. He then turned the gun on himself. Now, over the weekend, a pediatrician at the Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital on the West Rand highlighted the sad consequences of the health sector for young patients. He recounted devastating consequences of load shedding, poor resources, water shortages, uh, to name but a few. Here to make sense of this, I'm joined now by uh, Dr. Ashley Tunzi, CEO of the Tendisa Hospital, as well as Professor Adam Mohammed, head of the internal medicine at the Charlotte McClague at Johannesburg Academic uh, Hospital. Gentlemen, good evening and thank you very much uh, for your time and uh, joining us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus. Let, let, let's start with that uh, note from one of your colleagues, uh, Dr. Tim uh, DeMaria, saying the department is failing daily to ensure basic health care uh, for the people. He says, I don't know how you wake up every day and go to bed at night when you are failing to do the basic that you need to do, which is provide health care for the people that need it. Does that properly, Prof, characterize the, the current state of health in, 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 in the Gauteng province? Is the department completely failing to assist you as health professionals to, to ensure basic health care for the people? So I, I think uh, Dr. Tim de Mayer hit it quite, hit the nail quite accurately, and he's echoing the sentiments of probably the majority of healthcare workers. We are in crisis and we need crisis intervention, and it's a daily battle for patients and for healthcare workers and for administrators as well in these hospitals. And it's a red flag out there that we need intervention and we need help now. There's enough numerical data out there to show that we have failed, and we need to do something differently to make a difference for the most vulnerable patients. I agree with him 100%, and I salute him for raising these issues as well. All right, Dr. M Dr. Mtunzi, uh, you in April came up and says you currently working with 50% of the uh, healthcare staff that you actually need at the, the hospital currently. Are you raising, sounding the alarm uh, loud enough? Uh, what are you finding? What is the sense of what you're finding as far as ensuring that you have the staff shortage situation, which by the way, is highlighted across the board in, 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 in the province as one of the major challenges that need to be improved. Are you being heard? Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Tabo, for, for having us, and um, uh, good evening to your, to your viewers as well. Uh, demand for services has gone up. Um, Tembisa Hospital, for instance, uh, used to cater for uh, 474 um, uh, 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 thousand uh, population of citizens. Uh, we are sitting now at a 2.5 in terms of our catchment, 2.5 according to the census uh, 2011. Um, it would then go without saying that uh, demand for services is not meeting supply, but because actually the population rises, and, and as the population rises, fortunately, and we, we still are sitting uh, with, um, with the staff establishment, let me start by talking about that resource. Staff establishment that, uh, that, uh, that uh, depicts a regional hospital, whereas we are a tertiary hospital. Yes, it is true, and uh, we are busting in our scenes. But remember also, uh, the marker of a good manager is actually putting processes in place and being as clean as possible and being rational in terms of human resource so that we are able to actually be agile um, um, and be agile in terms of utilization of the, the human resource um, and all resources or nature of resources. Um, it, it would actually just go uh, without saying to say that, yes, we are passing at our seat, yeah. but it's not really actually a crisis mode to say that the health system is collapsing. Yeah. So what are you saying? Are you saying healthcare workers are able to provide care? It, yes, definitely we are able to provide care. We are providing care today, we are delivering services. We are not at the point where actually we are closing shop. At no point. Um, we are actually, um, uh, you know, uh, working tirelessly to provide services. But remember, actually, you know, uh, the provision of these services also, um, it's not at the, you know, at the end, which is a hospital. 
it's actually, um, it must be embedded in the community where it actually we do preventative medicine, number one. Number two, we strengthen primary health care so that we are able to actually discourage a uh, hospital centrism. Yeah. Because uh, with hospital centrism, that's where we find ourselves to say everybody wants to access the hospital. But at times, actually, we need to then be able to um, uh, go to the primary health care centers. The clinics are not utilized. We utilize the clinics. We're able to actually prevent this, the, 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 the saturation or the influx that is happening yeah. at, what, at the hospital level. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll, we'll, we'll outline some of those issues as well with the professor uh, and, and talk into details at some, some of these uh, challenges that they are saying hospitals are facing, especially in the Gauteng province. Dr. Ashley Ntunzi, CEO of the Tembisa Hospital, Professor Adam Mohamed, Head of Internal Medicine at Charlotte McLeaga Jarvisbeck Academic Hospital. Stay with us in Focus. Continue shortly. We're back tonight uh, here on In Focus looking at the state of health uh, in Gauteng. Dr. Ashton Tunzi, CEO of the Tembisa Hospital, Professor Adam Mohamed, Head of Internal Medicine at Charlotte McLeague at Johannesburg Academic Hospital. Prof, uh, it, it, we saw about two weeks ago or so uh, the, the accident emergency unit being reopened. But, of course, again, partially reopened, not fully reopened. Uh, the uh, hospital is said to be still at this particular point, probably working uh, at 70% uh, uh, of what it should be. What are the things that are still preventing that particular facility from opening fully and absorbing the kind of pressure that it needs to be absorbing at this particular point? I know the topography scanner, for example, is one of the issues that is being raised. Uh, but, of course, there are other, uh, other, other challenges and pressures at this point. Yeah, before I answer that, I think I have to respond to the other panelists' comments. And what he did was lovely highlight. Healthcare workers will do whatever it takes to help patients, and not administrators and not government officials. I'm sorry to tell you this. Healthcare workers will bend over backwards, do whatever it takes, even when they're under-resourced. We are under-resourced from a human resource point of view, from consumables point of view, from equipment point of view. And to say that we are not in crisis mode, I challenge you. I challenge you that the infant mortality rate has gone up in the last three years. The maternal mortality rate has gone up. The average waiting period for scans and investigations have gone up. The backlog for surgeries have gone up. So it's not fair to sit in a public forum and say things are fine. How many of us have been to a district hospital or clinic and look at the queues there? What time do clinics open? What time do clinics shut? What numbers do they use to see how many patients? Call the majority of people working in the healthcare workers that are on the ground level, the healthcare workers, and ask them, are you coping? What's happening? And it's not about quantity service. We are failing giving quality service. What's the number of TB patients that have gone off TB? What's our HIV adherence uh, thing? I'm sorry, we're failing at all of this year because we have a skeleton staff running and functioning in this year. Look at the challenges that are happening at Rahima Musa, a non-functioning CT scan. So now we're playing musical chairs with patients between these different hospitals. There's not a fully functional operating certified CT scan and MRI at Charlotte Makete hospitals. We are running with condemned equipment. 
you look at Helen Joseph Hospital, we're talking about central or central base hospitals. There are people waiting in casualty at that hospital for days on end. Everybody knows about this. Mm -hmm. The mental health care users are waiting for better care from the time of life ECD many. So I'm not going to brush underneath, um, underneath the carpet. We are in crisis and we need an intervention. Back to you, Tabo. Sorry for that slight... No, no, uh, no, no worries. No worries. Uh, 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 I want truth, to uh, highlight... If, if, yeah. if, if they are highlighting, for example, that uh, hospitals are paying more lawsuits because of, for example, deaths that occur and the contributing factor to those deaths is the horrendous uh, conditions in which uh, public hospitals are, are in, it, it does seem to be indicating that it's not just business as usual, but there is a little bit of some urgency that this needs to, 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 to bring with it. Maybe not a crisis, but certainly a breaking point. Uh, uh, no, definitely. No, I mean, there are actually challenges in the health system, um, uh, particularly as highlighted by the, the panelists, uh, to say that uh, there is actually uh, an increase uh, in the mortality as you actually had reflected, but also the constraints that are put by COVID-19. But also there are good stories. There are good stories, Tabo, and um, uh, good stories are actually that uh, we are delivering 18,000 actually pregnant women at Tabisa Hospital. That's a good story. Uh, good stories are that there are men and women that wake up every morning without fail to come and effect change. Good story. Good stories are that there are people who have changed their, uh, their attitude towards delivery of services so that they are able to actually deliver service to our people. Uh, those are good stories. Good stories are actually those compliments that we get from our public to say, hey, hang on, I've seen the waiting time has actually um, uh, decreased. Um, we actually had problems with waiting time. Uh, how managers actually have uh, instituted lean management in their facilities. Good stories. There yeah. are good stories. Yes, but also there are those challenges that are there. Uh, 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 challenges that will, will probably are systematic actually challenges that have been there. That would need a different type of thinking. So for us to actually think out of the box, yeah. But my emphasis, Tabo, is still to say that there are other parts, actually, of the primary health care that actually we have not u uh, utilized. Okay. We are underutilizing. And these actually would uh, also Before we run out of time, Dr. Mtunzi, let me come in here. I mean, you, you recently experienced a, a security breach, which was not a good story to tell uh, when a nurse was killed. How, how are you turning that particular challenge around currently to, to, to a positive story? Yeah, that was that was an unfortunate incident. And um, and, and Tabo, if you if you had followed the case, you you know that the breach actually was caused um, the, the the very same person actually flashing a blue light into actually the hospital. And you know, if you actually look at the, the investigative report, you will see that. But what we have actually done is reinforce security in terms of uh, the cameras that we have put in. Uh, at the, at, the, at the entrances and also in common uh, areas like passages and so forth. We've actually done that. But also we've actually had the support of, of the leadership, actually, um, the political leadership in the department, the ABC, who came, who came through and actually also had, uh, had signed a new uh, uh, appointment of a security company in our, in our facility. So, so, so all of that is actually done so that we can safeguard the interests of our patients we can actually ensure that our patients are safe and our staff as well, actually, as they deliver care. Yeah. Prof, uh, it, what does it take? Is it superficial fixing of the stuff, getting the equipment in? What will it take? I think it, it, it takes honesty and integrity and true reflection to say we need to be better at what we're doing. We don't need to applaud ourselves for mediocrity. At Charlotte Makeke this week, two doctors' cars we're stolen. We're paying for security at that hospital, millions of rand. Copper pipes are still being stolen. Electrical cables are still being stolen. We are under immense pressure, and we're paying people for services that are not being rendered. That's across the board. And we need people to honestly come and say, we are doing an average job, and, but we are not employed to do average. We employ to be great. We employ to give the best care service. And I think honesty and a true reflection will make us become better. Once we start doing uh, whitewashing of reality, we have problems. The thing about Rahima Musa, 
actress Hani Baragwanath Hospital, Helen Joseph Hospital, has been in the media for ages. Laetitia Demeni has been in the media for ages. I want to challenge Gauteng Department of Health and everyone. How many real beds have we increased for mental health care users in, in, in Gauteng? What is our number of bed capacities in the last 20 years that we've increased in appropriate number of our percentage of patients and population for Gauteng that serves uh, South Africa? The numbers are going up, but our resources are not going up. How many new hospitals have we built? I want to highlight some really positives that the uh, panelists has raised. Since the Department of Health has got involved at Gauteng, uh, at Charlotte Makeke, there's been a positive improvement in communication. There's room for improvement, but they're thinking out of the box. And, you know, it's been a long time since I can say that, you know, there is some positivity coming around. But I'm not happy with the speed, and that's probably because of where I come from. I want things to get done properly. But there are positivities. But I'm not here to talk about the few positives when people are dying. Yeah. And that's the reality. We don't have bread in a hospital. We lie about it. We don't have food in a hospital. We lie about it. Patients have died at Tembisa Hospital from not getting food. There was a whole inquiry about that. We have not learned from one hospital, but we want to repeat the mistakes across uh, Southern Houting. I'm sorry, we still need urgent intervention in Gauteng Health Department, at least for Southern Gauteng. Uh, uh, Dr. Jensen, let's talk about the structural issues and how they are affecting the hospital. By structural issues, I'm talking about issues that are affecting the economy at large, issues like load shedding, uh, issues like uh, uh, failing uh, water infrastructure. Uh, and, 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 and how are you managing those at Tembisa Hospital? Because I'm, I'm sure certainly if they affect uh, Charlotte McClake and Rahima Musa, they are certainly impacting on you as well. Yeah, um, obviously, uh, uh, you know, Tabo, the, the, the issues that you have actually raised with regards to uh, load shedding is affecting us. Um, the, the expenditure on diesel um, has gone up and um, because we're using backup generators. But we, we, we employ every manager actually in the department to say that, hey, man, in your facility, you must be having a UPS of sort when you back up this equipment that is expensive. So we do actually have uh, UPS in areas. So we are ready uh, if there is load shedding and eventually if, or, or if there is actually load shedding, there is actually some readiness or contingency plan that we have put. But also with regards to water, in some other parts, obviously, there is actually uh, a borehole water that is available. But uh, we've got water that is in our reservoirs as well. Every facility has got a reservoir, and it can push, actually, uh, it, can, uh, it can reticulate water into the facility. Um, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a compliance issue, and we have to actually have these reservoirs so that uh, in, in, in an event that there is actually no water, we are able to actually supply water yeah. to, to those areas. Um, so issue, are, are, you issue, are you saying to us, Dr. Mtunzi, that with a degree of proper management skills, I mean, even in these difficult conditions, uh, th there could be some ability to navigate some of these challenges. No, definitely, because we, we, we need the agility in the manager so that when you, when you see that there's going to be a problem with any infrastructure or structural issue, uh, you are able to actually utilize what is available. Remember, you know, uh, you, were, you were appointed in that particular area to say that, I need to supply water, I need to supply electricity, I need to supply ventilators so that I can be safe uh, uh, for patients. Um, all of that, actually, it is well with the ambit of, uh, of, the, of the manager that is entrusted with that particular facility. Dr. Mtunzi, I appreciate your time. See of the Tembisa Hospital, Professor Adam Mohammed, Head of Internal Medicine at Charlotte McClike at Johannesburg Academic Hospital. We'll leave it there for tonight. We'll revisit, of course, the state of health uh, as uh, things go on. And uh, if there are any improvements, of course, we'll bring those reports uh, to you. When we